This is a certified big podcast. Classic. It's Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. David Hooper with you, bigpodcast.com. That's the site. And this is the audio edition of my weekly newsletter, which is at that site called Big Podcast Insider. Every week, this is Friday morning, New York City time. I send out an email newsletter. It's got podcasting news, advice, new tools, new opportunities for you, things to watch out for. Just like this podcast, all of it in service to you growing an audience, growing your podcast, having more impact with your community, making more money with your podcast. As the title says, building a bigger podcast. All of the links to everything that I talk about today, it will be at that newsletter site, which is newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Don't worry about writing it down. I will mention it plenty of times. And here's what we're going to cover on this episode. 9,343 people watched your video. Will MySpace ever lose its monopoly? What? MySpace? Yeah, man. We're going to talk about that. Does this promo make you want to listen? I'm going to play it for you. We're going to find out. Make them feel you. Something for you to aspire to in the upcoming year. Get more podcast subscribers with Podlink. This is a tool that I found out about. I love this thing. And I'm very skeptical on these kind of tools. I'm going to talk more about that. Lifetime podcast hosting, only $29. Now, I'm not talking about the hosting that you and I are doing not hosting a podcast, but I'm talking about where do you put your podcast online? 29 bucks for life. What? Are these guys crazy? Yeah, probably. I'm going to talk more about that. Every issue that I've got, it's got classifieds for upcoming podcasts and podcast companies. There's one that I think you're going to be especially interested in. They're a new sponsor. This is an AI tool that will do your episode notes automatically. I've tried it. I've written some stuff up about it. And I'm going to give you more information in this episode. This episode is brought to you by Riverside.fm. Have you heard these interviews that I did with Jake Klaus over the last few episodes? Yeah, it's remote. He's in Columbus, Ohio. I'm in Nashville. Yet it sounds like we're in the exact same place. How do you do that? You can make it happen with Riverside.fm. Over 70,000 people and creators use it. Spotify uses it. The New York Times uses it. One of the great things about it, you're not only going to get a great quality recording that sounds great, you can also edit your content using Riverside's Magic Editor. You're going to save yourself hours of editing work with just a few clicks. If you're doing a video interview, it lets you upload your logo, change the session background, choose your speaker layout, and export it to the distribution platform of your choice. You can also stream your live recordings to your community, meaning while you're recording, you can live stream that session, that interview, via Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. The whole process on Riverside is easy. Don't worry if your guests aren't technical. All you do is send them a link. It's a web link. Your guest clicks on it. It opens up the Chrome browser automatically that guest is in the Riverside studio with you being recorded locally and sounding great. You want more information? Better yet, do you want to try it? Riverside will let you try a couple hours free just to see if it works for you. It's riverside.fm. You get a couple hours free. Look under the hood, see how it works. I think you're going to like it. And if you do, this is a discount code for you. It's going to save you 15% off any paid membership plan. The code big podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's riverside.fm, that discount code, big podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. All right, I've already gone over with you what's in this issue, what you can expect on this episode, what I'm talking about, but I don't want you to get confused because I'm smooth, man. I'm going to go from one story to the next story to the next, like a DJ mixing records. You say, what? Did that song end or is that a new song? I can't tell. Sometimes that's how it works on here because I've got the segues down. So to make it a little bit easier when I'm changing stories, what I do is I play a sound. It's like turning the page of an audiobook. Remember when you were a kid? When you hear this sound, turn the page. And that's what I do. When you hear this sound, it's time to go to the next story. So let's go. 9,344 people watched your video. I made that number up. <laughs> that's an arbitrary number. <laughs> But the truth is, if you get on your YouTube account, if you get on TikTok, if you look at your downloads, the whole thing is arbitrary, man. You got all these numbers on there. And what does it even mean? What does it even mean? Somebody watched three seconds of your video. Woo, great. They streamed five seconds of your podcast. Woo, great. Even if they listened to the whole thing, was it on in the background or were they actually listening to it and being engaged with it? What do numbers mean anyway? I'm finding that out firsthand. Last week, I joined TikTok. I've got that linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com if you want to see what I'm putting up there. Within 24 hours, 
I think he had five, six videos on there. I don't know, 3,000 people had watched them? Watch them, people, I don't know, are they robots? Who knows? Again, three seconds counts as a view. Does it even matter? Probably not. And that's why I bring it up. Lots of podcasters are excited about large numbers that you can get on TikTok, that you can get on YouTube. People talk about podcasting. Well, there's not the searchability there. You just throw something up on YouTube and you get downloads. Yeah, sure, man. Sure. If I had a commercial on the Super Bowl, doesn't matter what the commercial is, I could get up there and go, (laughs) put a phone number at the end of it. Somebody's going to call that number, give me a credit card. Who knows? That's just the law of large numbers. And it can make you feel good. It's a dopamine hit. It makes you feel like you're working. What I want you to do, and I know there's irony here when I talk about building up big podcasts. That doesn't necessarily mean millions and millions of listeners. It might not even mean 10,000 listeners. But let's say it's 1,000 listeners or 500 listeners. What if every time you put a podcast episode out, you had 500 people engaging with you? Would that feel good? Yeah, it would feel good. What if you had 1,000 people engaging with you? Yeah, that would feel good. Twice as good as 500? Maybe. (laughs) My point is this, man. You don't have to have a ton of people to have a successful podcast, especially if you were in a micro niche, such as podcasting. You don't see me talking about fitness or pregnancy or blah, 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 whatever these big niches are. I'm not talking about K-pop, but even that's a niche, just a big niche. I'm talking about micro niches, the stuff that you're really passionate about, the stuff that when you talk to somebody about it, not everybody's going to get it, but there are enough people in the world that when they come together in one place, which could be your podcast, that's going to be a considerable audience. And that could be a considerable income for you. And here's why that's exciting, because we don't really want large numbers for our podcast. Again, go to YouTube, go to TikTok. You can get large numbers. Hear people talking all the time. Man, I had 100,000 views on that TikTok video. All right, great. Could you cash them at the bank? Did you make any impact? Or is it just that dopamine hit of that click, 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 click ticker going up every time somebody supposedly watches it? Large numbers aren't what we want. What we want is for people to really listen. We want somebody to really be engaged with our content, not just watching three seconds so that ticker goes up and we get that dopamine hit. We want somebody to email us. We want somebody to tweet us, somebody to write us letters in the mail. You know, I still get letters in the mail. It doesn't happen as much as it used to, but the books that I have, they've got my address in it. So a lot of times I will have letters come in the mail to that address. Maybe somebody doesn't have internet access. I've actually gotten a few letters from prisoners, people who didn't have the opportunity to call me or didn't have the opportunity to email they did have pen, paper, and a stamp. And they'll reach out to me with correspondence questioning what I've said in these books. Hey, I'd like you to clarify something. Would you mind? Hopefully starting an interaction with me that way. I opened up the newsletter with this because I know a lot of people being the first of the year, we're talking about going big and we get into numbers and we think I'm going to have a hundred thousand of this or a million of this or 10,000 of this. Hmm. I mean, that's fine. That's fine, but what's behind that that you really want? That's what I would suggest that you look at. Why do you want those numbers? Do you want more money? Do you want more impact? Do you want that feeling of connection that you can get from having a podcast? If so, I've got some good stuff coming for you. I just got an email from my buddy in Pune, India, Srikant Joshi. I worked with him on the KCRW radio race last year. This guy is putting out 52 I'm going to call them micro documentaries. They're 52 radio pieces, one a week, every week this year. That's inspiring. Imagine the experiences he's going to have this year. Imagine how many people he's going to connect to. Imagine the portfolio he's going to have at the end of the year or even halfway through the year. That's impressive. When you see somebody doing something like that, you want to jump along. I said, man, I want to get you on this podcast and I want to talk about that. Then I'm going to follow up with you in a couple months three or four months. We're going to talk about how it's going. And then a year from now, I'm going to have you back and we're going to talk about what actually happened. Was it what you thought would happen? Anyway, think about something like that. I'm actually working on a project that you can get involved with. I will have more information on that for you in the next couple of weeks because I want to help you have that kind of impact. I also want to help you get to the place where if you're like Srikant and you're looking for bigger connections, And if you're looking to get better, 
you're going to have that portfolio that's going to help you. That's a real possibility that is open to every one of us this year. You want more information about it? You know where to go, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Will MySpace ever lose its monopoly? You're like, what? What are you talking about, David? <laughs> the end of the year or the beginning of the year, that's a time for predictions. Most of those predictions never happen. And I thought it would be interesting to link to a story from 2007 I revisit a lesson that we see play out all the time. We're probably seeing it right now with Twitter and Mastodon. This is a quote from the article. If it were a country, MySpace would be the seventh biggest ahead of Russia and Bangladesh, though not all users are active. It had 153,339,321 users when I started writing this article and 153,523,640 users when I finished. The next kid you see, I want you to ask this question. What is MySpace? I don't know. They're not going to know. They're not going to know. And you know a funny thing about MySpace? Did you know what it was before it was MySpace? That was actually a dot-com company in the, I don't know, late 90s. And it was one of these things like whale mail or mega upload where you could store big files and transfer them. And big files, I don't know what that is. That's changed. That probably wasn't gigabytes of files. Maybe it was 10 megabytes. It was maybe an MP3 of a song, something you couldn't send via email, but you wanted to send it to your buddy. That's what MySpace was. So by the time we knew about MySpace, what we know is MySpace now, it had already changed. And that I think is the biggest lesson here. Things change. However, content matters and connection matters. That will never change. Where we do it changes, but that content, the MP3 file, for example, how we get those to our buddies, that's not going to change. It's not even going to be MP3, though. The music is the content and also that connection. That's what brings us together. That's why I believe in podcasting. It is bringing us together. Here's maybe the biggest lesson. Do not build your house on rented land. Again, we're seeing this play out right now in real time with Twitter and some other social media properties. The ones that you thought you could connect with your audience through, but now maybe not so much. Engagement rates dropping. If you're not making the algorithm, you're not being seen. What are you going to do about that? I got some thoughts. More information, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Does this promo make you want to listen? I'm going to play this for you. Check this out. There's certain things that I'm not ready to talk about. Why? I just feel like she made me happy. Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk. One of the world's leading marketing experts. Entrepreneur, investor. A New York Times bestselling author. And is one of the loudest voices on the internet. I've exhausted the conversation of grinding, learning how to be an entrepreneur in the streets of New Jersey. There was a kid who wrote a medium piece about me being the face of hustle. I was on a plane, I landed, and it was just all this chaos. And there was a lot of things that weren't true. There were some things that really like triggered me. I didn't inherit my dad's liquor store. I built my dad's store for him. I knew at 17 that I was a guy. What's your dark side? The only place I feel like I'm dark is when I'm competing. We did rock, paper, scissors tournament with our leadership team. I quickly thought after I lost in the first five seconds, should I fire him? I was incapable dealing with losing. What is it that makes me want to be like this? And to be very frank. You don't have to give me the details. I'll tell you. It's Five years ago when we had a conversation, I asked you what your biggest fear was. I've got these photos here in Russia. How does that make you feel? It's very clear to me. It's been there for a long time in my head. I'm agnostic on Gary Vaynerchuk. I think he's an interesting guy, but he's not somebody that I follow online simply because I don't connect with him. But this promo, Diary of a CEO is the podcast. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was very well done. Like Gary or not, Promo is compelling. Nice clips, nice use of music, a great example of the power of editing. I thought the host came off like a genius. Because Gary, he's one of these guys that he's got a hard shell. You're going to get what you get with Gary. 
He's going to go into stories about selling baseball cards as a teenager. And when he was in school, he didn't go to any parties. And even when he started the company, they're having a party right outside the door, but he's working. If you've heard three or four Gary Vaynerchuk interviews, you've heard those stories. And that's more or less what you're going to hear in this full interview. The promo, unbelievable, a great edit. And you think, oh man, he's going to open up to this guy. He's really going to do it this time. No, not really. I think the host tried, but it is very hard to break through the hard shell of some guest. Still, some thoughts for you on your interviewing. If you want to go deeper with your questions and you've got a hard shell guest in the guest chair, I think you should make that attempt. The guest can always refuse to answer. Or like Gary Vaynerchuk, just hijack the question, go off on a tangent. (laughs) Then you got to reel them back in. Well, what about this? Ask the same question in a different way, perhaps. Anyway, let me give you three things that you can do to set the stage for a great interview to happen. First of all, do a pre-interview. I know a lot of people rolling their eyes. Oh, no, I'm busy. My guests are busy. Every excuse in the book. I don't like to have a pre-interview because I want that raw emotion of when I finally get the guy in the studio, we can just go for it. I don't want to hear stories that he's already told before because he can't tell them as good. We think Gary Vaynerchuk is telling on this interview, pre-interview or not. He's telling the same stories. That's what I was just talking about. The baseball cards, not going to parties giving away the best year of his life. It's the same stories. If you're having any guest of substance on your podcast, somebody's done a lot of media, they are telling the same stories. But what a quick 15-minute call will do, and do this a couple of days ahead of time, that's going to quickly establish rapport ahead of time, let it simmer a little bit, so when you come back in for the interview, you will feel like you know somebody, because you do know somebody. It lets you know where the guest is mentally at that time, where they are emotionally, what they've got going on, even if you already know somebody well and you've had previous experience together, a pre-interview will help you set the guests at ease and let them know that they are going to be taken care of. That is a huge factor in getting a guest to open up, especially a guest that's a little bit nervous, either doesn't have a lot of media attention and doesn't know how that interview is going to go, doesn't know what you're going to ask, maybe doesn't feel very confident behind the mic, or Somebody who has been tricked before and gotten into a gotcha situation where a host has made the guest to look foolish or stupid or maybe just feel uncomfortable. A pre-interview is going to help that out tremendously. It's 15 minutes. It can be done via phone. Just hang out a little bit. Hey, man, just want to let you know, here's who the audience is. Here's what I'm thinking about. Here's going to be the line of questions. Don't give me the exact questions, but here's what I'm thinking about discussing. I want to talk about the new book. I want to talk about your new podcast. I want to talk about your new project. I want to talk about work-life balance, whatever. Let them know more or less where you're thinking about going, but not the exact questions. Because you're not doing a script. You're not doing a performance. You want to have a real connection there. But give that guest something to think about. They will come more prepared when you do a pre-interview, and they're also going to know you a little bit better. Second thing you want to do, you want to make space for a great interview. A pre-interview does that. The work you do before you start rolling tape, that definitely sets the space for somebody to open up to you when you are recording. But you also need to extend this work to during your interview. For example, making sure producers, engineers, and the company reps, if you've got those guys on your session, that they are not in the way of the connection that you have with the guest. If you're doing video, that they are not staring blankly at you and the guest as you record your interview. That's weird, right? Riverside.fm, they've got something called producer mode. And that's becoming more and more common where if you're doing video, it's just you and the guest and everybody else is just listening, maybe watching, but you're not seeing their camera. That is so much better. I don't know if you've ever had this happen, maybe with an interview, a job interview. I have. Somebody wanted to hire me for a production job and I'm talking to the recruiter. She's asking all the questions and there's somebody else on the line just staring at me. I don't know who she is. Suppose I could have asked. She didn't introduce herself and I was in there with the recruiter. That's all I knew who was going to be on there. That's all they told me who was going to be on there. I'm thinking, what's going on here? And that was it. And basically that kind of situation, that is what a lot of podcast interviews are like. It's hard for a lot of guests to open up like that. Where's that extra person, those extra people doing there? And you're going to get a much better interview probably 
if those people aren't around or at least are on producer mode. If I've got an important interview where I really want to go deep with somebody and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it, I actually prefer to have a one-on-one interview like that. Now, it can be a little bit weird, I think, for some host, if you're used to having an engineer and somebody record, that that is now your responsibility. But if you've got something like Riverside that is automatically recording, and if you've got an external recorder that is doing a backup recording, it's really not that big a deal. It's certainly something that you could learn. With that said, a lot of independent podcasters, they are everything. They are the producer, the host, and the engineer. So this may be a situation that you're never in. But regardless, making space for a great interview, that's important. You being one-on-one with that person, that's actually in service of that a lot of the time. Here's something else to think about as well. I do my interviews audio only. I want you to hear me. You don't need to be seeing me. Nobody else is going to see me. I know people say, well, you know, it helps with the banter. It helps with the pacing. If I can see your lips moving when you're moving into the mic. Yeah, okay, cool. But your listeners aren't seeing that. And if it's an audio only thing, why are you even using video? Mm -mm. And I think there's something, and again, this goes to being watched and being on camera and being nervous. I think that's a constant reminder when you can see a red light on the screen and somebody's looking at the screen and they're seeing you stare at them. That's a constant reminder that somebody's being taped. If you really want to see somebody relaxed, and you probably know this if you've had the tape running before you actually start your interview, I go, oh, are we on? And they change completely. Red light syndrome, we call that. Ooh, 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 they get nervous. If you really want to get your guests to relax and open up, something for you to consider may be an audio-only interview. Even if you've got one of these things like Riverside where they're recording video, cut the video off. Use the audio-only portion. That's going to get you a better interview nine times out of 10. Third thing you can do, ask your question and shut up. Silence is powerful. Don't mess up a moment for the guest to open up to you and answer your questions or more, even beyond the questions that you asked, by talking too much. As a host, you're probably already pretty good at this, but this is one of the best things that you can do when you ask a question. Ask your question and be quiet. And that time there, when they're thinking about it, should I answer it? And they're just hoping you're going to release that tension by speaking. They're thinking about it and they're thinking, oh, fine. I will release the tension myself by giving an answer for this. Don't let them have the easy way out. To summarize this, the three things that you can do in order to set the stage for a great interview to happen. One, do a pre-interview. Two, make space for a great interview. Continue on that space that you're setting up during the pre-interview. Do it during the interview. Don't jump in when you've had that rapport and be, okay, all right, we got to get serious. Go, red light. That's going to make a guest nervous. Continue to make space during the interview. Also, ask your question and shut up. Guests can always say no if they don't want to answer your question. That list, more information, available at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Make them feel you. Keep this in mind for the upcoming year. I've linked an article about storytelling. That's worth a look. But I'm going to read a quote from Pharrell. You know him, musician, right? Happy did that song. All you old schoolers, not the Eddie Kendrick song. The one that came out maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago. This is something he said after reviewing music by Maggie Rogers. This was three years before she was nominated for Best New Artist Grammy. She was a student at NYU. She played in the music and here's what he said. He said, I have zero, zero, zero notes for that. And I'll tell you why. It's because you're doing your own thing. It's singular. It's like when the Wu-Tang Clan came out. Nobody could really judge it. You either liked it or you didn't but you couldn't compare it to anything else. And this is such a special quality. And all of us possess that ability, but you have to be willing to, speaking of long pauses, he's got a long pause here. You have to be willing to seek. You have to be willing to be real frank in your music and frank in your choices. Most of the time people say, okay, I'm going to make this kind of song so it ends up sounding like something we've heard before, felt before, you know? But your whole story I can hear it in your music. Have you ever seen a live performance by Freddie Mercury? I linked to one. 
It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. It's a song called Dragon Attack. A lot of people, they don't know that song. They know something like We Will Rock You or We Are the Champions, Bohemian Rhapsody. This song, Dragon Attack, though, whoo, it's a rocker, man. And the stage presence that this man has on stage, it's unbelievable. It's got that call and response thing with the audience, and it's just this groove. Do, 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 And it's got that long live music intro, the kind you would never hear on the radio. You're like, all right, real simple, about eight notes. And this guy's getting into it. He's so into it. Probably 10, 20,000 people watching him. Wouldn't have even mattered. You took away the lights, the smoke machines, the loud amps. Wouldn't have even mattered. He could be right across from you, five feet away. And you would have been like, whoa. This guy is something to watch. That's presence. And that's what Pharrell's talking about. I see this all the time. My syndicated show, Music Business Radio. I've got these guys coming in, songwriters, artists, playing songs that you've heard. I've got videos of this up on Big Podcast One, the Instagram account. When you see these artists that have written these songs and you're next to them, you feel them, man. You feel them in a way that is completely different than if that song had gone through a producer and a radio edit it's coming through a little bitty FM speaker. You see something and feel something completely different. And you as a podcaster have that same ability. That huge presence that you can have when you connect to a guest. This is how to make a guest open up to you. You have that huge presence and that excitement that that guest is there and that genuine curiosity when you ask those questions. I've had people mention to me a lot. He goes, man, I can't believe you asked that. And I can't believe he answered it. But I think why I'm able to do this is that these guys see my passion when I'm in there. They see how genuinely curious I am. And I've done those pre-interviews and we've had that conversation. And we do this before we go into the studio where we're just hanging out. And we do this on purpose. There's a pre-interview and then there's the, hanging out in the business office a little bit. Oh, Stephanie's getting the studio ready. Hey, this is Gary. Gary's a producer. He's going to make sure that I'm on track. Don't worry about him. Just completely ignore him. Stephanie's going to make you sound great. She's going to get you all mic'd up. If you say something you don't want us to get out, just let us know right then. We'll make sure it's stricken from the record. It will never see the light of day, but we want you to be comfortable. They know that I care about them. And when I go into the deep catalog, talking about something 10, 20 years before or talking about seeing them as a teenager or talking about a bonus track that was never released in the United States, but the true fans, they all know about it. They're like, whoa, you did your research. I was hanging out with these guys one time backstage, a band called The Farm. They had a song called Groovy Train. I think it's around 93. And these guys came through town and somehow I'm backstage. I was not working this show and we're eating on paper plates. <laughs> like cake or something. <laughs> and I'm hanging out with them. And I couldn't believe it because I really like this band. And I mentioned having this poster, an album called Spartacus. And if you think of a Tide box, a box of detergent, big, bold colors, Spartacus kind of looked like that. And I had a huge poster. It was probably six or eight feet tall. It's a promo. And I was telling him, I said, I got this poster hanging in my room. Spartacus go, oh man, really? You got that? That was a promo poster and instant connection. I wish I'd stayed in touch with those guys because they were very, very cool. But that is connection. And then once they see that you're a fan, once they see that you've read the books, heard the songs, watched the show, or just done your research, then they're going to open up to you. To wrap this up, this kind of combines what I just said about the pre-interview and making guests comfortable but also you bringing your authentic self. There's nothing wrong about being excited about interviewing somebody. There is nothing wrong about knowing the opportunity that you've got. This doesn't happen so much now, but there are college radio stations out there. And you've probably heard them, especially if you're like me, if you're over 40, maybe. College radio was a thing, right? This is how I got started. This is how a lot of people got started. And you would listen to college radio 
and they are the most boring hosts. And sometimes you can hear this in community radio too. And they'll say something like, the new album is coming out December 14th. Buy tickets now for the Friday show, $10 in advance, $12 at the door. It takes a minute for you to get comfortable on the microphone. Certainly did for me. I didn't do a solo show. I probably was 15 years in before I did anything where I wasn't interviewing a guest or had music to play or something to cover for me. Something like this. It took me about 15 years to do this. So this was not immediate for me. And I think part of that was just not being comfortable myself on the mic. And part of that was not wanting to seem too excited. Being too cool for school, man. Don't do that. Don't do that this year. Don't be too cool for school. Sometimes you got to go bigger and bolder for that huge charisma that you've got in person to come through those little speakers. Because that can sometimes whittle it down. But when it comes to you getting a great guest and getting a great interview with that great guest, that's going to help a lot. That's how you build this thing out, you know. If you want to get a great guest, have other great guests that you're doing interviews for. Have that portfolio where if you go to an agent or a manager or the guest himself, you can say, here is the kind of work that I do. And they see that excitement. Say, oh, okay, I'll give this guy a shot. As opposed to, um, okay, um, okay. So what's the name of that book that you just released? Okay, um, all right. So um, what inspired you? How did you get started? All those are great questions. Great questions. Just don't lead with them and do your research while you're on the air. That is not going to get you the interviews that you want. I mentioned this at the very beginning of this episode. I've got some stuff coming up. I've got something that I think is going to help you with this. I'm organizing it right now. It's going to start in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be free. It's going to get you more comfortable with talking about your stuff, bringing this big energy forward. I'm going to have information about that within the next couple of weeks or so. And I will let you know as soon as I do. Until then, for more information on this and that link to Freddie Mercury, do not miss this. Do not. Unbelievable. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Get more subscribers to your podcast with Podlink. Speaking of free, this is a free tool that will allow people to easily subscribe to your podcast. You calling it subscribe or follow? Follow your podcast, whatever. Either one works. Podlink is what it's called. I think this thing is cool as hell. Even if you don't use it all the time, you're going to want to claim your podcast on the Podlink system. I've got more information about this at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. This is why you want this. This is like one of those link in bio services, but it's got every single way that you can subscribe to your podcast. All done for you. All you need to do is claim your podcast. So for example, pod.link slash big podcast. It makes it very easy for people to subscribe to your podcast. I've got more information about it. It is at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Not free, but almost free. This is lifetime podcast hosting, only $29. And I'm talking about media hosting, pod ops hosting. It's a punt, like any kind of lifetime deal. But it's 29 bucks, man. Even if you save just a couple of bucks, you're going to save yourself a ton of money. I reached out to the founder, Rob Winters is his name. I asked him for more information about the offer. Here's why he is doing it. Here's what he said. We decided to run the lifetime offer primarily to drive new customer acquisition with the number of podcast hosting platform options available. We wanted a way that would connect more directly to potential new buyers beyond a pay-per-click type ad. Meaning if you're going to Google, you type podcast hosting or host my podcast, you can pay for your results to pop up on the first page. It's an ad though. And you're going to have your ad next to everybody else's ad you might be at the top of the search engine, but you're not necessarily standing out from other media hosts. So Rob thought, instead of using all this money on pay-per-click, why not take that same amount, put it back into the service, give people a discount, same result. Get people talking about it. I would not be talking about pod ops if they are running a pay-per-click ad, but this is a great deal for you. So I am talking about it because they're doing this lifetime deal. And here's how they've built it. If you're curious about how this works, it's on AWS, that's Amazon meaning that there are no servers. They're all Amazon servers. If they need to expand, 
If they start growing, there's more bandwidth, more space. All they have to do is call Amazon, say add more servers. It's very easy to expand that way. It's very cost effective and allows them to scale as needed to ensure that PodOps is always running efficiently. He says in the next six months, it's got some large feature enhancements that are planned, an email marketing tool to engage with subscribers, also a podcast audio editor. So that's basically how he's doing this. 29 bucks for life. He's hosting on Amazon, just like all major podcast media hosts, by the way, with the exception of Libsyn, everybody is on Amazon. Instead of putting his marketing money into conventional booths and sponsorships, he's giving new customers a deal. It's very hard to pass up. That's why I'm talking about it. I've got more information about it and links at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Let's get to the classified ads. You know, you can get a classified ad with me in the newsletter and also here on this podcast, the audio edition of the newsletter. It's 35 bucks. So if you've got a company that helps podcasters that you want to promote, newsletter.bigpodcast.com has more information about that. I'm starting to get booked, but I do have a few slots available in upcoming issues. I'm keeping the price low because I want to support the companies that support this podcasting space. So if you know of a company like that or you have a company like that, reach out to me, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Monetize your podcast audience with launch. I talked about link in bio. You know how easy that is to set up. Drag and drop. Launch is something very similar. If you're looking to monetize your podcast audience, it is a drag and drop platform that makes it easy to launch and run successful membership programs. So whether you're taking money via Patreon or directly via Stripe or PayPal, Launch will help you do that. More information, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Rock and Pod Expo, March 17th through 19th. I've talked about Rock and Pod a lot over the years because I am there every year in my spandex. No, just kidding. <laughs> I was never cool enough for spandex. But I went to some of those shows in the 80s. I talked about Kiss, seeing Paul Stanley and Kiss on the last episode. Anyway, if you're wondering, what happened to those guys? All the rock and roll guys from the 80s, 90s, they are at Rock and Pod. It's the ultimate weekend gathering for rock music artists, podcasters, and also fans. Again, March 17th through 19th. Come see me in Nashville. I will likely be doing some kind of live interview during Rock and Pod. That's what I've done for the last couple of years. What I'm looking at right now is putting together a panel of musicians who have launched their career via reality television. And no joke, man, I'll probably know two dozen of these guys. Everybody from American Idol to the real world to voice to X Factor. There are a bajillion of these shows. And I thought it'd be interesting to put three or four of these guys in a room and talk about the experience. What did you think was going to happen? What happened? Let's talk about the pros and cons. Because a lot of people, not just musicians, maybe you as a podcaster. As a matter of fact, I know a radio guy who got on The Bachelor, Wells Adams. If you're a Bachelor fan, you probably know it. He's been on The Bachelor like six times now at this point. Anyway, he's famous, dude. He's working at WRLT with me. He was the morning guy. Anyway, Rock and Pod Expo, March 17th through 19th in Nashville. More information available, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Swell AI. Use Swell AI to automate your podcast episode summaries, time-stamped episode highlights, and long-form articles based on the content of your episode. I am skeptical of AI tools. They are a dime a dozen right now, but I saw Swell AI. It's made just for podcasters. So I'm going to try it out. It's very cool. You upload your podcast episode. I'm talking about the audio. It makes a transcription out of it. And then it spits out very specific content that you can use. Long form articles, short form articles, because you can use these segments from the long form article for individual posts if you want. The way it segments is ingenious. It helps you with your episode notes. It will give you timestamps. Here's what you're talking about at five minutes in. Here's what you're talking about at 10 minutes in. Gives you episode titles. It's very cool. I've got an article that I wrote about it linked. I'm going to be talking more about it in the next issue of Big Podcast Insider because it was very cool. Like I said, I'm skeptical of this stuff. And I was like, wow, this actually works. I think it's a sign of what's to come. I've talked to the developer. They seem to understand podcasting. And I think you're going to like it. So check it out. I've got more information at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. That is it. Another episode of Build a Big Podcast, audio edition of my newsletter, Big Podcast Insider. It goes out every Friday morning, New York time. If you want the email version of it, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. 
We've also got the archives. So you can go back, back, back for the last couple of years or so. All of it in service of growing your audience, making a bigger impact, making more money with your podcast. If you want to subscribe to this podcast, make sure you never miss an episode. By the way, this is episode 500. And on the next episode, I'll be talking about lessons learned from 500 episodes of Build a Big Podcast. Here's how to make sure that you do not miss it. Go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I've got three buttons for you. One for iPhone, one for Android. One is an RSS feed. Click the one that you want. One click is all it takes for you to subscribe and never miss an episode of this podcast. I've got a QR code there. Pull out your phone, scan the QR code. You can get Build a Big Podcast on your phone. Instantly take me to the gym, take me in the car. Where do you go? I will be there with you in your ear helping you grow your podcast, build your authority, increase your influence, and make more money. Everything's at bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Go there right now before you forget, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I'll see you there, and I'll see you here on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.